What are activities that are a danger to purity? Those stupid phones. Those phones are a danger to your purity. And you all know it. Nobody has to, nobody has, I don't have to go on and on about that one. And why? Just because there's bad stuff in the phone? When I was a kid, we had to go, we had to go, we, we would run around the woods just hoping we could find a dirty magazine. Do you see? That's what we did. Now you've got stuff in your pocket, you can look up anything you want. It isn't right. Other activities with purity, think, just think about this. Your senses, when you engage all of your senses, you keep satisfying your senses, TV, computer, video games. It, it, it does something because of the colors. The colors, that we already know it has to do with uh, the dopamine that's in the frontal lobe of your brain. It actually, even if you're not looking at the dirty stuff, you're just doing normal video games. And I'm not, I'm not trying to say you can't play video games ever. But those of you who like playing them all the time, it, you become addicted to them. Not just because of the video game. The way it works, the same way it works for gamblers. It has this thing. It does something with the dopamine response that happens in your brain from the colors and the, um, you know, all the stuff that the electronics do. It'll actually dry out and shrivel your frontal lobe. They, they, this is scientific. It's, it's incredible. It'll, it'll, it'll shrivel it up. Do you see? The only way you can get it to grow back, um, and it has real effects on you, the only way you can get it to grow back is by cutting yourself off from that stuff, or at least use, using it in great moderation. But that's the problem. The people that make these phones, we just use them for recording devices and making videos. Um, we don't use these as phones. The brothers bring them when they leave the world and they, they let us use them because they're very high quality. We made a beautiful video recently with just one of these things. So we use them for recording stuff. But when you're using these, um, they, the people that make them, they wrote a book. And I have a copy of it. Um, oh, does anybody remember the name of that book? Fred Burn? What's that? It's called Hooked. It's a little yellow book, and it's written for programmers. They know how to hook you on apps. That's their job. And they do it by colors and it making it jiggle and, and having it flashing and stuff like that. And next thing you know, you, the people that made these phones, they won't let their kids have them because they know what they do. Do you see? So what activities? That's one thing. I'm not just zeroing in on phones. I'm zeroing in on activities that deal with overindulging your senses any of them wanting to be too warm when you sleep too comfortable when you sleep not wanting to face the cold not wanting to face the heat not wanting to sweat and get your hands dirty whenever you you become a little bit too effeminate that's all very dangerous for you very dangerous for you and it all will start leading to impurity any of you walk around the house and just eat stuff Nobody here does, I'm sure of it. But sometimes you just pass through the, the kitchen and just eat some stuff. You get bored, you sit down on the couch, you just start eating stuff. Then you go back to the kitchen and you just eat some more stuff. There was that lady, Alice Van Hildebrand. Nobody's ever heard of her here. Alice Van, yeah, you heard of her. Her husband was super, super duper smart and so was she. She was a holy lady. Her husband died first and she, she was still around for a little while. She died a, you know, a while ago. But she, <coughs> she went to a seminary where they wanted to have her come and speak. And she walked into the seminary and she saw snack machines. She saw the snack machines and uh, the first thing she said, she walks right in the door. The person coming to accompany her, because she's a guest of honor. You know, she, the person coming to accompany her, she says to him, there must be a problem with impurity here. Whoops. Why is that? Because they're, in, they're indulging their senses. They're snacking. You have to be mortified. The very first words out of our Lord's mouth, do penance. Look at St. John the Baptist. He was mortified. The saints are mortified. What's that mean? It doesn't mean you got to go around taking the discipline and wearing hair shirts all the time. It means not constantly indulging yourself, right? Do you really have to have every time dessert? No, you don't have to have it every time. If that's your family's practice, just take what you're given. Do you see? Don't go and try to get more. Don't try to make it warmer in your room. Don't try to get it more colorful. Don't try to get whatever this kind of clothing or, or this kind of whatever. This is the stuff that leads to 
impurity. And you might think it odd, but it all leads to impurity. Sleeping in leads to impurity. Sleeping on your stomach for men leads to impurity. You shouldn't sleep on your stomach. I know, I know it sounds crazy. You're going to say, hey, this guy's a nutcase. No, no, that's, that's, they, they've been saying that. The saints have been saying that for years. Okay? Men have to be very particular, very cautious. You should never fall into impurity. Ever. You see? Never. It's not okay. Now, that stuff that happens when you're sleeping, you don't know anything about it, that's not even, that, doesn't, that, doesn't, that doesn't come from you. Okay? That stuff you just wake up and something happened, that's not, you, you were asleep. There isn't anything there. That's just the body doing stuff. But sleeping in and indulging the other scent, this, this stuff will all lead to impurity over time. And I think you all know. Movies, certain kinds of music, all that stuff will lead to impurity. <coughs> And activities that can foster purity, mortification. But being busy, don't sleep in. This is the thing. Set your alarm. I know some of you hate your alarm, but you'll be really happy when you get used to waking up to an alarm or you'll get used to waking up and turning your alarm off before it goes off because you hate your alarm. But don't ever sleep in. Count out. You you need so much time. If you get to bed late because your parents have you doing work, school has you doing work, you got some kind of activity, for right reason you're getting to bed late, Never just, you never take your day late into the day. Do you see? Night times for Satan. The day times when we work, our Lord talked about it. He didn't say it was for Satan. But he said that the, in the day is when we walk. Night is coming when you can't do any more work. So go to bed. When it's nighttime, you go to bed. And in the morning, you wake up. You shouldn't sleep during the day. Well, we take naps and stuff like that. You know what I mean? If you have to take a quick power nap, even the successful, they say a 10-minute power nap. It'll be... So activities for purity is being disciplined. And your father should be able to help you with that. You need discipline in your life. You don't have downtime. You shouldn't just be sitting there doing nothing. Have activities that you do. Make stuff, read stuff, study stuff. St. Ferdinand, you've heard of him? Ferdinand III? Who's heard of him? You all haven't heard of St. Ferdinand III? King of Castile? I really encourage you, you dads, get your sons this book. There's two of them. There's a red one, really, it's written a long time ago. Fantastic read. It's on St. Ferdinand III, King Castile. Then there's a white one that was written, I think, by somebody here in America. It's fantastic as well. They're both really great books. But he was a young man who was in court, meaning his dad was a king. He was going to be the king someday. And it was very licentious there. Lots of courtiers. They had nothing to do but kind of entertain and whatever. Lots of beautiful young ladies, lots of food, lots of wealth, lots of everything that you want. And what did he do? He studied. He got got up early in the morning and he prayed the office with the monks. He was always there for matins, lauds. He did vespers in the evening. He, He attended mass every single day. This is why all this stuff's going on around him. His dad was upset with him because he wanted him just to be worldly like everybody else. But Ferdinand was a holy young man. And so he spent his time, his morning doing that. The rest of his time, what did he do? He was going to be king. And he knew it. So he had a duty. What was his duty? He had to hear court cases, so he had to know the law. So he studied the law. He spent all of his time studying the law of the land. Now back then, every region had its own law. So he had to study every region's law and then he, would, he, would, he knew as king he'd have to travel and he would have to hear cases, right? As king, they would come straight to him. And what was the second one? He had to fight because their country had Muslims in it and they wanted to get rid of the Muslims. Remember, the Muslims came in in the 400s. In the 400s, the Muslims took over Spain. And from that time on, they fought the Muslims until they got rid them of, uh, they rid Spain of Muslims, which didn't happen until the 1400s. But Ferdinand did the most to clear them out. He went to war with them constantly. So what did he do before he was grown, when he was your age? How many of you were 17? I think he became king about 17. By that point in time, he was already a master with the sword. In fact, whenever he went into war, there was a time they were laying siege to... Did anybody remember the one where 
It's one of the, I, f- I forget, but anyways, they're laying siege to one of these. It, it was a very difficult thing. He never took off. He wore his armor in the middle of the sun. It's, it's like here in Texas. You can imagine sleeping in a field in the heat, wearing full armor for six months during the summer in Texas. That's what he did with a hair shirt underneath him. But when war would break out, like they attacked his Templar Knights, and he didn't hear about it until late. The Templar Knights were over there fighting. They were fighting for their lives for like, I don't know, it was like six or eight hours until Ferdinand finally found out about it. And when he heard about it, he got on his horse and he rode over there in a rage. It was a holy rage. But he gets over there. He sees them all. He's got a crown on his head. You always want to kill the king. And what's Ferdinand do? He jumped his horse right into the thick of the battle. And they said that he swung his sword so fast, you only saw people falling down. And in the end, there were, everyone was wounded. Everyone was bloody and wounded. All the Muslims were gone now. The, the Templars, tons of, he, he, Ferdinand helped bury them all. And one of, the, one of the soldiers, one of the knights came over to him and they saw his shirt was all ripped and he had blood all over him. And like, oh no, Ferdinand got, and it wasn't his blood. Ferdinand never once got injured in battle. And he was always the first one in, in the most difficult circumstances And he was the most skilled knight out of all of them. Why? Because when he didn't have anything else to do, he would wield a sword with himself. He would just be out there working the sword. He said his arms were so big, his one arm for the sword, it was so big. He just had this massive arm because he could just wield the sword for hours on end fighting Muslims. Do you see? That's how you, that's how you, that's how you protect yourself from, he never fell into impurity. Do you know when it came time for him to get married, all the, all the greatest noble ladies of the land would have loved to have been married to Ferdinand. He was holy. He was holy. He was good looking. He was capable. Do you see? And he never once thought anything about it. Finally, his mother, she's, she's a very holy third order herself. She, Ferdinand was a third order, Franciscan. His mother came to him and just said, son, you should take a wife. And he said, I, he didn't have it. He just, he didn't think about it. He only thought about ruling his country, fighting the Muslims uh, and, and hearing cases. That's all he thought about doing. And he just said, whatever you think. So she found him a wife and he just married her. They lived a very chaste, beautiful marriage. They had like, I don't know how many kids they had. It was like 10 kids, 12 kids. But he had no interest in even getting married. But when he did enter into marriage for the good of the kingdom, he lived a very chaste, holy marriage. He was chased before he got married. He was chased when he was married. And then when his wife, he had two wives, because then his his mother came to him a second time after his first wife died, who he said was a saint. He thought his wife was a saint. She probably was. Then he got his second wife that his mother went, found, and brought back. And he just, again, said, I'll do whatever you want, mother. But he didn't look for a spouse. And then he entered into a holy marriage with her. She, too, extremely holy woman. Do you see? He prepared for these things. He spent his time preparing to live his life. To sit around wasting time is an offense to God. And that's why he'll let you fall into impurity. Do you see? So to have good, holy activities always, you should always be busy. One word I don't like is to relax. I don't like the word relax. Leisure Holy leisure is important. Rest is important. You should rest when you need rest. You should recreate and wholesome recreation when you need wholesome recreation. You should exercise. Young men should exercise. You should have a strong body. You should make sure you have a strong body. But you should never just sit around and do nothing. 